They'd known each other as kids and began dating in high school in the 50s. Lila says she had no suspicion about his homosexuality. I had dated a lot of young men, and Mel was just like the rest of them. And he was bright and witty and funny and, and fun to be with. And it seemed like life was an adventure with him, and that's why I wanted to be married to him. I didn't know I was gay. I thought it was something we would overcome. And I didn't, I, I didn't tell her until we were married because I thought I was a heterosexual who had this problem. How did she react to, to she, it? Just as loving as she did about anything. Do you want to stay in the marriage, she said. And he said, I, I want to be married. I want to have children, and I want to get over this. <laughs> Through the years, the whites spent thousands of dollars on Christian therapists. Mel endured exorcisms, electric shock therapy, and aversion therapy. I would feel like, yes, this therapy has helped. Now it's for sure, and then within months, I felt lonely and anxious and cut off from my own kind, and it would start again. Private torments and public acclaim. He was a gun for hire for the right and righteous. Ollie North's alter ego, a jack of all inspirational trades, a sought-after Christian biographer. His books made national bestseller lists. He made money, and he made a close friendship with Jerry Falwell. But privately, he was suicidal. There were things where I was slashing at wrists with, you know, with, with bent coat hangers, and, and there were moments where a good psychiatrist finally, and, and I collaborated, and he and Lila talked, and we realized that I really did want to die. And I was so shaken, I couldn't even drive. I thought, this is real. I mean, what will I do as a young woman with two young children and a, and a husband who is suicidal? I mean, it, it was scary. By 1984, Mel had come to terms with himself. The 22-year struggle was over, and they ultimately divorced. But they still remain close, dote on their grandchild, and gather as a family on holidays. The divorce was actually Lila's decision. It was kind of her gift to me. I couldn't do it. I felt so bad, and I felt so guilty. You mean that you felt it was breaking a, a sacred Christian commitment? I love her and I love my kids and I loved having a family and I loved being home with them at the same time I couldn't bear to go on pretending to be heterosexual when in fact I was gay the closet is a place of death for gay people coming out is a place of life even if it costs you through all those years of marriage and the struggle and everything else did you ever doubt that he loved you no I don't even doubt it now I know that Mel did not have a choice about his sexuality. And if he did have a choice, he would have chosen to be married and have a family and be with me. For the last 10 years, Mel White and Gary Nixon have been partners. They live together in the countryside near Dallas, a content, middle-aged couple. You know, bad things happen to everybody, and this isn't the worst thing that ever happened to people. And when they do happen, all you can do is be a good sport about it. Just go on from there. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Lila White has immersed herself in her work as director of, of development of for All Saints Episcopal Church in Pasadena. Mel White fights his war of resistance from the Cathedral of Hope in Dallas. You get up just as you are and come here to receive God's love. Members of the congregation, like Joe Lundy, monitor the religious rite. Lundy, who died of AIDS shortly after we finished this story, told us that on Pat Robertson's 700 Club alone, there are two or three vicious comments a week. And what people are saying is, we want special minority status on the basis of how we do sex acts. That's what it is. How do you do sex acts? Do you do sex acts with little boys or little girls? Do you do sex acts with uh, adults? Do you do sex acts with animals? I have to do everything in my power to stop them because for their own soul's sake, they're doing terrible damage. And, and if I'm to be a responsible Christian brother, I need to say to them, look what you're doing. You're doing wrong. And one day, I really believe that God is going to say, Jerry, Pat, all you guys, don't you know what you did to my gay and lesbian children? And that they're going to suffer for it. 
I am not uh, telling anyone to hate anyone. When I preach the Bible, Leviticus 18.22, that homosexuality is an abomination. Romans chapter 1, that homosexual activity, not the person, is reprobate. When I use those words, I'm using biblical terms. But Leviticus 20 is clear that a man who lies with another man is an abomination and should be killed. Of course, it also says a man who handles a pigskin is an abomination. Well, you know, what will that do to American football? Here's my problem with what Mel has done. To make sex such a god in your life that I've got to have sex with a man even if my dear wife Lila is hurt from it and my children are hurt and my grandchildren, that is pure abject selfishness. Do you think Mel White chose to be no, a homosexual? No, no. I believe that he could have chosen not to be a homosexual. I believe that uh, God has provided through Christ deliverance from every kind of aberrant behavior. I know with certainty that he had no choice about his sexual orientation. Mel has all those family values that people talk about. And I know that he is a Christian and God loves him the same as he loves Jerry Falwell or Pat Robertson or Billy Graham every bit as much. Don't you think that's possible? That come on, someone could be <clears throat> as much of a Christian as Jerry Falwell believe in God and Jesus as much as Jerry Falwell and in the power of faith as much as Jerry Falwell and still have to live in a way that is not like Jerry Falwell's. I don't think the issue is living like Jerry Falwell. I think the issue is living the way the Bible declares the correct way to live. And Mel White wanted to meet with his old friend to discuss their differences, but Falwell will not see him. If Jerry Falwell even comes out to talk to me, he's acknowledging the fact that Christians are th that Christian gays and lesbians are at the heart of this country, that we lead their choirs, that we play their organs, that we're their deacons and board members, that we have more than our share of pastors and priests and, and rabbis. He doesn't want to acknowledge that. He wants to create this caricature that he can use as a whipping boy, an alien culture, a, 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 an agenda to take over the nation. If you could choose today, make a retroactive choice. Oh. Would you choose to be straight? Of course. I mean, to be straight would have saved all of these years of suffering and pain. But that I am gay and I finally learned to live with it, now I'm really excited about and happy about being gay. So I wouldn't want to give up what I have now. But if I could all, if it could start over again, I don't know a gay or lesbian person who wouldn't like to be straight.